take a look at this, Travis. What is it? Well, I'm not sure, but it looks like it might be silver. Silver? Where'd you find it? Over on the North Mesa. I was bringing it in to show it to you and Miss Martin. If it's silver, I'll bet she'll be happy. That kid's had a tough time trying to make that dairy business go. It don't look like silver to me. Just mica likely. Now, wait a minute. I'm going to show it to Miss Martin anyhow. Here's your ticket, Mr. Howe, and your Pullman reservation. Oh, thank you, Miss Franklin. Are there any further instructions? Yes. If anybody calls, writes, or wires, you haven't the faintest idea where I am or when I'm coming back. Mr. Richard P. Howe gone on his first vacation in three years. And that he certainly deserves it. Right. And that goes even for Mr. Cooley? Oh, now, young lady, you forget. Mr. Cooley only happens to be the president of this corporation. But if he should casually inquire where I am, Tell him I'm as far away from the shadows of the Gibraltar Trust Company as I can get. From somewhere in the Berkshires, under a leafy tree, the blue sky overhead, a fish on one end of my line, and me on the other. And if he wants to know any more than that, he'll have to ask the fish. Can you imagine? For a whole month, no orders, no complaints, no telephone calls. Mr. Howe's office. Yes, sir. No, he hasn't gone yet, but he's just leaving. Very well. Mr. Cooley wants you to stop in and see him before you go. Well, what could he want? He knows I'm going. I have a hunch that certain trout are going to be spared to this world a little longer. Oh, he probably just wants to say goodbye. Oh, would you have somebody put these things in the taxi cab, please? Hello, Mr. Cooley. I was just about to take off. How familiar are you with the Martha estate? Well, I know it consists chiefly of a ranch in Arizona that Tom Martin willed it to his daughter. That's about all. That's enough. We have more trouble trying to advise that girl than all the rest of our estates put together. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Cooley, but my train is... She lost $50,000 trying to carry on her father's cattle business. I thought that would teach her a lesson. But it didn't. You know what she did? She turned her cattle ranch into a milk farm. She put thousands of dollars into cows and silos and barns and bulls. She's losing money hand over fist. Sort of milking the estate, as it were. <laughs> it's not a laughing matter, Dick. Unless she gets rid of that ranch soon, she won't have a nickel left. Now, she's got a pretty good offer for the place, but she won't sell. Well, can't you find some way to make her sell? Well, that's why I sent for you. Now, how soon can you leave for Arizona? Arizona? Oh, but now, Mr. She keeps Cooley, asking I... me what I know about the milk business. Actually, I haven't an answer. Now, what I want you to do is to go out there and make her think you know all about it. Prove to her that she can't succeed. She herself. Me. Well, compared to some of the problems you've handled for us, this will be a cinch. Oh, but well, Mr. Cooley, I don't know anything about the milk business. Well, neither does the Martin girl. All you've got to do is learn enough to get by on. Look it up in the encyclopedia. Buy a book about it. Get somebody to teach you. But I don't want to go to Arizona. <laughs> the properties of such foods transmitted through the bloodstream affect the enzyme, which causes a hydrolysis of the butter fats. Where are we now, Professor? Uh, between uh, assimilation and metabolism. New Mexico or Arizona? In the scientific culture of the cow. Oh, I'm sorry, Professor. I guess the heat got me. Mr. Howell, if you expect to acquire any knowledge of the milk business before you reach your destination, it is necessary that you pay attention. All right, Professor, read on and let the enzymes fall where they may. The process of ensilage has a direct effect upon the lactopepsin quality of the milk. Now, don't tell me you didn't know that. I? It's my business to know it. You know it. And I know it. But does a cow know it? As a rule, all carotene-rich plants contain an abundance of vitamin A. In fact, 
the pigment carotene is considered a pro-vitamin A. Now that is a very important chapter. Let's review it. Tarwood, ragweed, garbage. Well, what's your friend Cooley say this time, Ann? Same old thing. Another lecture and the usual advice. Still says I can't succeed and he wants me to sell. <laughs> I don't want to make you sore again, but there's a lot in what old Cooley says. Why don't you chuck the whole thing and take Middleton's offer before you get in any deeper? Still afraid you're on a sinking ship, Bert? You want me to get another foreman? <laughs> now look, Ann, don't get me wrong. You know I'm for you 100%. But you have had a lot of losses and a lot of hard luck. Come on. Let's go get a cup of coffee and another piece of pie. Rangeville, we are here. Mr. Howe, I'm terribly concerned. Now listen, Professor, all I want to do is get this job over with. We'll cradle this milk business so that Martin girl will get sour on it and sell out in a hurry. But what will this young lady think when she realizes we have come out here to ruin her business? Oh, quit worrying, Professor. All you have to do is tell me what's right so I can tell her to do what's wrong. But don't you think? I never think on an empty stomach. Where's a good place to eat, partner? Well, I reckon the best is the worst. I beg your pardon. There ain't but one chow place. Gus's. Thanks. What do you have? I'll have a nice thick steak. Well done on the outside, rare and tender inside, and nice and juicy. Brother, if I had anything like that, I'd eat it myself. All right. I guess I'll have to compromise on ham and eggs. Uh, compromise me, too. Huh? Uh, I, I mean, I would enjoy the same. I got it! It's coming! Oh. Oh, you overreach just a little. Have this one on me. Oh, please, Bert. I want to get this thing myself. Twenty nickels, please. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, wait a minute. The lady's playing that machine. Oh, that's all right. I'll keep it warm for her. See? The follow through did it. You're much too kind. If I'd have known that, I'd have tried for the razor. I'll get that compact for you if you say the word, Anne. No, let him keep it. I hope it matches his complexion. Oh, Bert. Yes, Hank? The new machine parts are over the freight hall, and they've got to be paid for it. Well, that's fine. Then you and Tex can take them out to the ranch right away. We'll sure do that, Miss Martin. What's the matter? You swallow a bone? Miss Martin. I'd better get over to the freight office and pay that bill. Don't lose too many nickels. What? Wait a minute. Make it milk. Oh, take it away. What's the matter? You ordered milk. Now, please, my friend, I ordered milk. But don't tell me that's milk. Just look at it. Fission and calcium. Practically no lactopepsin. Probably wrong insulage. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if it was split enzyme. To put it more simply, it's obvious the ragweed garlic resulting from wrong ensilage has caused hydroelectricity of the butterfly. Uh, uh, pardon me, Mr. Howe, but you're slightly confused. Now, please, you don't understand this, Dad. It's a little out of your line. Well, it's right in my line, and I don't understand it either. That milk happens to come from my ranch. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I, I didn't mean to be personal. But it happens that milk is my specialty. And I guess I let my professional instincts run away with me. Oh, I'm afraid I was a little hasty, too. You see, I do run a milk ranch. 
I'm afraid I'll have to admit there's still a great deal I don't know about milk. Oh, it's a very abstruse subject. It takes years of study and experiment to become a milk specialist. You don't have to tell me that. Now, it's obvious at a glance to me that this milk has no uh, carotene. Of course, you know what that means. No, I'm afraid I don't. Well, it's rather difficult to translate the terminology of the uh, expert into the vernacular of the uh, layman. But what I'm trying to get at is this. Uh, the quality of a cow's milk is affected by hundreds of factors. Ignorance of any one of which may be disastrous. Hmm. I can understand that. Therefore, one must learn by bitter and expensive experience. or get the advice of an expert who has mastered the science of cow culture. Uh, but I'm afraid I bore you. Oh, on the contrary, Mr... Uh, uh, how? Uh, Mr. How, I'm Miss Martin. And what you said about the milk is quite true. You know, we never have been able to make a grade A race. I think we'd better be getting out the ranch, Anne. Oh, Bert, uh, this is my foreman, Mr. Travis, Mr. Howe. How are you? I'm glad to know you. Oh, uh, this is my secretary, Mr. Cruikshank. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Cruikshank. Yeah, how do you do? A lovely weather. Well, I think I'll see if my follow-through is still holding good. He's a milk expert. Who told you that, him? He's informed in all those matters I've been reading about in books. You know, those things we couldn't understand. Dubbed that one. Guess I didn't keep my head down. Are you going to be in Rangeville long, Mr. Howe? Oh, I'm afraid not. You see, I've just finished conditioning a dairy, and I'm taking a few days vacation before returning east. Wouldn't it be marvelous, Bert, if we could have someone like Mr. Howe out to the ranch to give us a few pointers? I'm afraid Mr. Howe may be a little too rich for our blood. Well, I usually work on a commission basis, 10% of the increased profits during the first six months. That seems fair and quite reasonable, doesn't it, Bert? Uh, Mr. Howe, I hope you won't think I'm presuming on too short an acquaintance, but could you, I mean, would you come out to the ranch for a few days and see if we can improve our quality? Oh, I'd like to, Miss Martin, but you see, I really do need a vacation. Uh, won't you even consider it? Well, I might be able to arrange it. But you see, I've been planning to be back in the off within two weeks. Oh, but in two weeks you could accomplish wonders. I've got it. Welcome home, Missan. See you, Manuela. Welcome to the Martin Ranch, Mr. Howe. Thanks. Uh, I, I'm afraid I'll require some assistance. <laughs> of course, you would notice I'm not an equestrian. <laughs> Take care of the bags, Pedro. Well, what do you think about it? Excellent. Very modern indeed. I would uh, never judge by outside appearance, Dad. Your buildings seem to be well placed. I hope they're well constructed. Of course, I can't give you a professional opinion until I've inspected everything carefully. Naturally. Oh, Bert, I'm going to leave Mr. Hall, Mr. Crookshank, in your care. See that they're settled, will you? Why, of course. Thanks. I'd like to change into something more practical. Well, I'd like to change into something a little less practical. See you later. All right, gentlemen. Hey, Dizzy, come here. Show these gentlemen to the bunkhouse, will you? All right, Bert. Mr. Howe here is a milk expert. He's going to give us some points on the business. Yeah? Follow me, gents. Hey, Bert. I seen Middleton in town. He wants to know what's doing. Plenty. Looks like there's another monkey wrench in the machinery. Well, here you are, gents. Fine. You make yourself right to home. Oh, by the way, what kind of cattle have you got on this ranch? Holstein. Good cows, ain't they? Well, yes and no. It all depends. But Mr. Howe, Holstein. Oh, but that's all right, Dad. Here you are. What's that for? Well, that's for bringing in the suitcases. Looks like I brought you in a trunk for that. 
Well, come on, Dad. Let's get busy. We've got a lot of work to do. You better put the cows back on their regular feet and go easy for a few days until I can get a line on this milk expert. Well, as a milk expert, Professor, how am I doing? I'm afraid I could hardly classify you as a milk expert, Mr. Howell. Say, by the way, Professor, how do you rate these whole bergs? Not whole bergs, whole steam. That's right, Professor. Pick me up whenever I'm wrong. In private. Well, how do you rate these whole steams? Well, under the conditions that exist. Out here, whole steams are preferable to Guernseys or Jerseys. They're cheaper to buy. Consume less fodder and give more milk. You mean these are the best cows she could have on this ranch? Undoubtedly. Swell. Now I know just what to do. I'm on your way, love. Si, senorita. Oh, tan bonita, you look lovely and so becoming. Oh, by the way, uh, Emanuela, what are we having for dinner? We have the mutton, Miss Anne. Oh, mutton. Let's have chicken. I fix him good with the Spanish rice. That's fine. Oh, Mr. Hall. Oh, Miss Martin. Are you ready for an inspection tour? I was just waiting for a guide. At your service, Mr. Hall. Thank you. Very good. Quite modern, isn't it? What do you think Mr. Howell will say about it? Well, it's difficult to predict what Mr. Howell will say about anything. But when he does give his opinion, it will be positive. And the secretary to Mr. Howell a long time, haven't you? Yes, and no. That is sort of off and on. Smart fellow, isn't he? Well, he's given me a new view of things. Well-educated man. Know where he did his studying? Massachusetts Agricultural College. Being with Mr. Long, I don't suppose a dairy is any novelty to you, Mr. Crookshank. Novelty? <laughs> I designed and installed the first milking parlor in New England. Under my supervision and according to my specifications, of course. Oh, I imagine that. You know, I used to think that specialists and scientists were boring old fogies with long beards. But Mr. Howe is really very interesting, Bert. Come and see our equipment, Mr. Howe. Well, what do you think of our bottling room? Do you want my frank opinion? Why, of course. Well, I think I'd like to reserve my definite opinion for a while. Well, let's take a look at the milking parlor. Hmm, Holstein. This is inexcusable. What? What do you suppose is wrong? I couldn't say. It's liable to be anything. Awful. Frightful. Who's in charge of these animals, Mr. Travis? Well, I am. Why? Don't you ever groom them? Groom them? Yes, groom them. How do you expect a lot of unkempt, slatternly animals to function in the way nature intended them to? Are you going to try to tell me that a cow's appearance has something to do with the quality of her milk? Oh, not her milk, but the milk of the other cows. Are you serious? It may sound facetious, but scientists who have studied animals under domestication have proved that the appearance of their companions in captivity affects them. You don't say so. I do say so. And I think you should take steps at once toward improving the appearance of these cows. What do you say, Ann? Well, I think you should do exactly as Mr. Howe says. Okay, Mr. Howe, you're the doctor. Hey, Red, take a look at those cows. What about them? They look all right to me. Yes, but they don't look all right to each other. Mr. Howe is here to give us some points on the milking business. Now, it's your job to improve their appearance. 
Wash them and pretty them up. Manicure their hooves, brush their hair. What I mean to say is, groom them. Groom them? You heard me, groom them. That's what you wanted, isn't it, Mr. Howe? Exactly. That includes you, Texan Hank. Where'd you learn all this? In one of those high-powered Eastern colleges? Hmm. That's so? Which one? Yale. Oh, I see. I had a friend that went to Massachusetts Agricultural College. Oh, Massachusetts Aggies is pretty good, too. Shall we go now, Miss Martin? I think I've done all I can here. Hey, you're not on the level about dolling up these cows, are you? Sure, anything he says goes for a while. That's a great act he's got, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. That's all there is to it. I can sure ring down the curtain. Are all your cows Holsteins? Why, well, yes. What's the matter? Are Holsteins all right? Well, in some sections, yes. But out here, I think that Jerseys or Guernseys would be better. It's the other way around, Mr. Howell. Now, please, Thad. If you ever want to learn anything about the uh, milk business, you must pay attention. You forget that only this morning we were discussing this very point in the bunkhouse. Then you think that buying Holsteins was a mistake. Well, uh, yes, I do, Miss Martin. But we'll try and make the best of it. Pardon me, Duchess. Now have a look. Uh, we uh, ought to have some hair tonic, uh, some heat is right. That a boy, Smokey. Now, when you get rid of all that dandruff, you might give her a little permanent wave. Well, I've done everything. I've even herded sheep. But nurse maiden a cow, what's the West coming to? <laughs> well, grooming these cows ain't made no difference in the milk so far. I sit down. Me too. I'm going to sit. Well, uh, you guys are setting, I'm setting. And I'll set here till the milk freezes over. I sit too. I'm afraid we're having a little trouble inside, Mr. Howe. Is that so? What is this, boys? Listen, Doctor. I got Miss Ann's interest at heart, but I'll be doggone if I'm going to pretty up a cow. Well, I admire a man with principle, but it's going to be as I say. And there won't be a cow milked on this ranch until she's groomed. Well, we sit until them orders is changed. Mr. Travis, will you see what you can do? I'm riding out on the range with Miss Martin this morning. Thank you very much. Come along, Thad. Wait a minute. Why ruin a good bucket? Mr. Howe, the employees seem terribly dissatisfied and not in accord with your views. Wouldn't it be well to effect some sort of a compromise? Listen, Professor, the longer those men sit down, the better I'll like it. The more sit down, the less milk. The less milk, the sooner Miss Martin will be ready to sell. Well, the cows ain't to blame and they gotta be milk. Come on. Your property extends all the way to this point. Yes. But I haven't been out here very much since I went out of the cattle business. When I was a little girl, I used to ride herd for Dad here. Believe you me, that was much more fun than running a milk establishment. Oh, I can understand that. Don't you think it's a pretty big job for a little girl like you to be running a great big place like this all by yourself? <laughs> That's what the trust company keeps telling me. Oh, what have they been telling you? That I ought to sell. Oh, have you had a chance to sell? Yes. A uh, Mr. Middleton made me an offer. Is it a good offer? I guess it's a very good offer, considering. If I were to advise you to sell, too, would you? Well, if you told me I hadn't a chance, I think I might. Putting a pretty big responsibility on me. I hope I deserve all this confidence. I'm sure you do.
goodness gracious! Hello, Mr. Crookshank. Was that a shot? I'm sorry I scared you. I thought you were a coyote. Well, thank goodness I'm not. You better keep off this part of the ranch, my friend. The boys do a lot of hunting around here, and you'll never get popped off any time. Well, I assure you I'll be more careful in the future. Uh, uh, thank you very much for questioning me. Oh, uh, which way is it back to the ranch? Well, I, uh, I seem to have lost my sense of direction. Right over there. and Keep going. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you'll pardon me. I've just had the most unusual experience. I was mistaken for a coyote. For a what? A coyote. And I was almost struck by a stray bullet. I could practically see it. You'd better stick closer to the fireside hereafter. I thought it'd be better off if it didn't go any further. Good. Say, this thing's getting too hot, ain't it? Yeah, a little. All right. Okay, Thad? Yeah, I'm quite all right. I think I've done a pretty good day's work. Uh, but, Mr. Howe. I think I should tell you about an observation I made today. Good or bad? Decidedly good, you see? Skip it, that. But, Mr. Howell. Now, look, I've got to see Miss Martin this afternoon, and I can't use any good news. Come on, Hank. Where are we going? I think a little horseback ride will do us some good. I suppose I've just gotten used to disappointment. My greatest problem out here, though, has been with the boys. You see, they're all dyed in the wool cattle, men. I'm afraid they'll just never surrender to milking cows. One of them left a few days ago. I'm going to miss Tom Roberts, too. He was one of my best men. If you'll have confidence in me, I'm sure I can fix things up all right for you. Mr. Howe, my future is in your hands. My clients usually call me Dick. It makes the cows feel I'm one of the family. All right. <laughs> uh, I did something this afternoon I'm sure you'll approve of. What was that? Well, you remember telling me that Guernseys are better than Holstein? Yes. Well, I... I ordered a hundred Guernseys. You did what? Why, a hundred Guernseys would cost... $20,000, I know. I wired for the money. You did that. Why? Do you think I did wrong? I'm afraid you did. You see, you've mistaken a mere suggestion for a definite decision. In the future, I think you'd better wait for my final word. Funny that Anne should be taken in by a couple of fakes. She's no sap. Listen, Middleton. Anne's so stuck on putting over that milk business, she's ready to believe anything. Besides, this Howe's a smooth talker. He's the kind of a guy that women go for. And Miss Anne's kind of going for him. Oh. Are you sure that's not the angle, Bert? Oh, I'm not afraid of that kind of competition. Those dudes wouldn't be going to all this trouble if they didn't know something about that silver. And after our work, you're not going to let them spoil this deal for us, are you? No. You can't take any chances. I wonder where they came from. Well, I don't like it. Neither do I. What do you suggest? I'm not suggesting anything. Well, uh, Rob has dropped out of sight and nothing happened. And hey, we... wait a minute. This is different. What's so different about it? Somebody sent them here. There'll be a lot of questions. And questions lead to answers. 
What if an accident should happen? Something unavoidable? Well, you can't help an accident. Okay. As long as we understand each other. Come on, Hank. I think you make a mistake. You let that city man ride this horse. Nothing to worry about. He's an expert horseman. I don't know. I hope he's all right. The horse I had picked out for you today went a little lame. You said right, so I'm going to let you have one of our prize animals. Oh, bring him out. I can handle him all right. That's possibly vicious. That's all right, sir. Stop him! What'd you let him have that horse for? The horse I had picked out for him went lame. He said he could handle him. But you shouldn't have done it. But he seems to be doing quite well. Don't worry, Mr. Travis. You handled him very nicely, Dick. I was worried for a moment, but... Maybe you think I was. Are we all ready? Yes, Lock and Bar. Didn't work. That fellow can ride at that. Hello, Sheriff. What are you looking for? A bad cow or something? Hello, Bert. I just dropped in for a splash of milk. Sure. Hey, Red. Bring the sheriff a drink of milk before he arrests us for resisting an officer. Okay. How's Miss Ann? Fine. She's out on the range. She'd be sorry she missed you. There you are, Sheriff. Thanks. Thanks very much, Bert. Drop in any time. But, Ann, if you sell, you'll be getting a lot of money. Why are you so sad? Oh, I guess I just don't like to admit I've been licked. It isn't a case of being licked. Suppose we just say, You've sense enough not to throw good money after bad. What well, isn't the money, Dick? I wasn't trying to make this place go for myself. When Dad came out here, this country was practically a frontier. He fought his way up until he became one of the biggest cattlemen in Arizona. Then men came out of the East. Big companies went into the business. Things began to change. Dad believed in the ways of the Old West, and he couldn't change. So after a while, he wasn't a big cattleman anymore. And that broke his heart. Oh, I guess it's silly and sentimental of me, but I wanted to make the name Martin stand for success the way it once did. I didn't realize this meant so much to you. If I haven't a chance, I, I guess I can take it. Now, I wish you'd leave me alone, if you don't mind. Oh, but Anne. Please, Dick. Let's go into town tonight, to a dance or a picture show. Have some fun. Good idea to keep your mind off your worries. No, maybe. Well, Thad, I think our job is finished. So soon? Yes. The high-pressure salesman has earned his vacation. Nothing like earning a vacation. Go out on the job and bring home the bacon. Make good. That's the motto. Sentiment has nothing to do with it. 
you know anything about sentiment, Dad? Well, yes. I think it's noble to have sentiment. You think my boss, Mr. Cooley, knows anything about sentiment? Well, I don't know Mr. Cooley. Well, never mind sentiment. I'll ask you a practical question. In your opinion, do you think this dairy has a chance to succeed? Why, certainly. Well, why didn't you tell me so before? I have been telling you. You have? I've been telling you what is right, and you've been telling Miss Martin what's wrong. Yes, Dad. To do what's wrong. You own this ranch? Do you think you could make it pay? Yes. Do you think we have a chance of helping this girl? There's no doubt about it. Would you say it was worth giving up a vacation to try? Why, I should think so. Would you say it was worth giving up a good job for? Why, yes. With this ranch's potentiality... Okay, Thad. That's enough. You've told me just what I want to hear. I've got a very important engagement tonight. I seen an accident once down in Texas. Yeah? Yeah. A bunch of the boys were sitting around one night telling stories. One of the punches a little unfriendly with the boss's favorite. A fellow by the name of Coslow. I knew this puncher was out to get that guy. Well, this puncher happened to be cleaning his gun. So we asked this Coslow to uh, toss him a cleaning rag. Well, when Coslow went to pick up that rag, he was right in line with the gun. The gun went off, huh? Yeah. And when the coroner showed up, there was Coslow with a rag in his hand. And five witnesses to prove that it was an accident. You know, I've got a gun that needs cleaning. We was. 4,000 head of cattle stampeding on. Me and my partner at the edge of a cliff. Well, sir, there's nothing else we could do except die like a man. So, I reached for my corn cob. Very calmly, I splashed me a match on my pants. Just as the leader bore down on us. Well, sir, it was a flash of the match what done it. Suddenly, the leader cut off to the left, and the rest of them followed like a flash of the breeze. Whew. Took us five minutes to realize we were still alive. That all seems a little far-fetched to me. Uh, may I have a little of your bowl, please? Hello? Yes? Yes, this is Ann Martin. That telegram? Signed by whom? You know, I had a very remarkable experience once. I'll never forget the time I was on an elk hunt down in Mexico. It was getting along toward dusk. I got separated from my party. There I was, all alone in the desert, with no gun. A light going faster than a jackrabbit. Well, sir, pretty soon I started to pick my way through that forest. It was dark as pitch. There was no illumination for my pipe. That's because I didn't have any match to light it. Well, sir, pretty soon I heard a low, growling roar. So aim a gun. Well, sir, I'll never forget it as long as I live. No, sir. Then I started to run. Well, sir, I could have spotted Glen Morris 90 yards and beaten him in a 100-yard dash. Pretty soon, I started to get warm. First of all, I thought it was me. Then I looked around, and there on my shirt tail were 4,000 elk breathing on me. Well, sir, I ran, and I ran, and I ran. What happened? Huh. Well, what could have happened? 4,000 elk on one side of me, 2,500 feet of cliff on the other. I was killed. Oh, Mr. Howe. <laughs> oh, horse feathers. Say, how? Do you mind throwing me that clean rag? Why, well, certainly. Mr. Travis. Yes? Miss Anna wants you right away. She say come quick. Sure was born with a rabbit's foot in his pocket. Yeah. Oh, I've never been so humiliated in all my life. I sent a wire to Mr. Cooley, asking him to send me money to buy Guernsey cows. I said it was on the advice of Mr. Richard Hall, the milk expert. Yes? Well, Western Union just phoned me. Mr. Cooley wired back. 
He said Mr. Dick Howe was not a milk expert at all. He said he sent him out here not to show me how to spend my money, but rather to encourage me in selling. And if Mr. Howe couldn't convince me, that he'd come out here and do it himself. If I sell my ranch, it won't be because Mr. Cooley wants me to, or Mr. Richard Howe. You mean Howe is a representative of the Gibraltar Trust Company? Well, what do you know about that? Think of it, what a fool I've been. All ready, Ann? Hello, milk expert. I've just had a wire from your boss, Mr. Howe. My boss? Yes, Mr. Cooley. What? What's the big idea of coming out here and lying about everything? You've been working in my sympathy, gaining my confidence, just so you could discourage me. Now, wait a minute, Ann. It's true that I do work for the Gibraltar Trust Company, and that I came out here on a job I thought was in your interest. Since I've realized what this ranch means to you, I don't think you should sell it. We can make it pay. Let me stay here and help you. I don't need your help, Mr. Howe. You're one of those smart businessmen that comes out to the West and thinks everybody here is a hick that you can talk into or out of anything. Now, please, Anne. Miss Martin needs any advice. She knows who her friends are. Yes, you wanted me to sell, didn't you, Bert? Mr. Howe can go back to Mr. Cooley and take a deep bow. And he can say that he was successful in his purpose. He can say that he made me sell and that he won. Now, please, Anne, won't you even listen to me? No. Goodbye. <laughs> Morning, Ann. Oh, hello, Bert. Still upset? Oh, I just can't get over being so taken in. I, I suppose I deserve it. I shouldn't have had so much confidence in him. Oh, forget it, Ann. How is a slick customer who turned out to be a little too slick? Oh, I phoned Middleton. You decided to sell. He's expecting us over there today. Are you quite sure I should sell, Bert? Well, you know what I thought about it right along. Oh, I know how you feel about old times and your father. I've admired your spunk. But you haven't had a chance from the start, dear. You need someone to take care of you, Ann. I think I've proven myself. Oh, you've proven yourself all right, Bert. I know you're right. I guess there isn't any use trying anymore. Oh, I don't feel so bad about it, dear. I feel all right. I'll change and go over to Middleton's with you. Have your horse saddled right away. Thank you. Well, Dad, we've had a nice trip. Not quite as enjoyable as fishing. I did learn something about the milk business. I should say in any event that you had succeeded in your purpose. Yes. Well, anyhow, Cooley will be happy. Think I deserve a raise? I doubt that very much. Wonderful. one. Do you think Middleton will make a success of the milk farm? I don't believe the purchaser is interested in milk. You think he'll turn it back into cattle, eh? Well, if I owned the place, I'd mine the silver. You'd mine the which? The silver. The geological formations of the rocks indicate there should be very valuable deposits. Wherever you have Triassic superimposed on Permian and Devonian. Well, are you coming or not? Uh, 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 just a moment, please. Uh, Mr. Howe! Uh, one minute, please. Uh, Mr. Howe! Mr. Howe! Why didn't you tell me all this before? I tried to, but you wouldn't listen. Uh, besides, I was under the impression you wanted her to sell. All ready, sir. Now hold these and be careful with my bag.
Where's Anne? You have to go a long way if you want to find her. She's gone over to Mr. Middleton. What's the quickest way? There is only one way. Yes. You follow the road a little bit, then turn off to the left. Good. What are you doing back here, Professor? I came back to see what possessed Mr. Howe all of a sudden. Well, what about Mr. Howe all of a sudden? Well, I think he's going to tell Miss Martin. Tell her what? About the geological formation. What about them? Well, what I meant to say is, I think he's going to inform Miss Martin that there's silver on this wreck. Oh, he is, is he? He ain't going to tell nobody nothing. Why they were so violent with me, I can't understand. I know that Mr. Howe is going to tell Miss Martin, and they don't wish him to. Do you suppose they're going to harm Mr. Howe? I wonder who we can get to help for safety's sake. Come with me. I know what to do. How is going to like it? I think Mr. Howe will love it. Oh, I hope we've done what is best. We're lost, boy. I guess Anne's ranch is too. Don't you know the way to Middleton's? Spill the beans. If I'm right, old boy, they'll lead us right where we want to go. shall be paid in ten equal payments.
Is he here? Is who here? What's all this about? I'll take care of this, Mr. Middleton. Shall we go on? Uh, why, yes. And the property includes 4,000 acres. You've got to stop it. Now that we've found everything in order. What do you think you're going to do? by breaking in here. Don't sell your ranch. What is this? I've just learned something that... I don't care what you've learned. Keep out of my business. I'm going to sell. Here, you sign right here. I think you've bothered Miss Martin just about enough, Hal. Do your business obligations call for such rude and abrupt methods? I thought that in the East... Now look here, Middleton. <laughs> but, Ann, you've got to listen to me. Hi, Sheriff. Fine, Bert. How are you? Mr. Middleton, Miss Martin, and you, sir. It's all the excitement, Middleton. Nothing but a business transaction. I don't think you're needed. Well, I hear there's been quite a lot of excitement over Miss Ann's property. Tom Roberts told me about it yesterday. Tom Roberts? Why, he's dead. Sure he is. The only man that didn't know that is the fellow that plugged him. What about that, Travis? I don't know what you're talking about. Let me see that gun. The boys in town just want to compare the bullet in Robert's body with your gun. What is all this? I'm sure Mr. Travis can clear all that up. Come along, Bert. Sorry, Mr. Middleton, for having disturbed you. Now you can go on with your business. Will somebody please tell me what this all means? Mr. Crookshank's the hero. Let him tell you. I have your permission, Mr. Howell. Yes. To speak freely. Shoot the words, Professor. Well, you see, it's all a question of geological formation. Wherever you have Triassic superimposed on Permian and Devonian, a syncline causes a precipitation of silver. If found in sufficient quantities, the results are... Marvelous. 